Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video we are going to talk about how to use the displacement maps in Unreal Engine 5 Early Access now that we don't have that option in the materials. I know you're asking why use a displacement map? Why use that since you can bring a high poly mesh, you no longer have to tessellate the landscape because that was an optimization thing. The reason for the displacement maps is because there are tons of surfaces inside of the Quixel mega scans that are really cool that I want to use and I want to use them in Unreal Engine 5. Now, there may be some changes that will allow us to do that once Unreal Engine 5 actually releases, but I'm just going to give you this option for now. So as you can see, I have this surface right here, which if I look at it from this angle, it's fine. But if I get too close, you, you can notice it's a flat plane. But if I go over here, you can already see, even from afar, that there's a little bit of variation in the geometry, and that's because I am using the displacement map. That being said, I'm not using it inside Unreal. Actually, there is a way that we need to go into a third-party program. Uh, it, it's a free program, don't worry. Uh, it's something that everyone likes to use. Uh, it's called, I think it's called Blender. Uh, probably you've heard about it, I don't know. Now, before we move on to how to do this, remember there's a Patreon if you want to support the channel. There is the Discord. Now we have a really cool Discord. Two of the members work really hard to make it uh, look really nice and fun for you guys. So please join us. It's an awesome community. You can also follow me on Twitter where I usually post the latest updates for the channel and latest Unreal things that I have seen. Uh, if not, then just leaving a like, leaving a comment really helps uh, with the engagement. Now. Let's get into the video. For this, you're going to need the original Quixel bridge. And by original, I mean not the one inside Unreal. We're going to be using the actual application. You can still download it. You can still sign in with your Unreal Engine account and you can download the assets. The purpose of that is so that we can get the maps from outside Unreal. So we have all my maps here. I actually downloaded this asset already. You don't have to export it out. You only have to download it. So I have my displacement here. And the other thing that you're going to need is Blender. So the Blender that I'm running is 2.9. What I'm doing are very simple operations. So any version of 2.8 will work. I'm not sure versions beyond that because of I'm going to be using modifiers. If you're a Blender user, you probably know what I'm going to do by now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a mesh. I'm going to go to grid. And this will give me a grid right here. So you can see that this is tessellated to all oblivion. And I have a couple of parameters here that I already set up. By the way, if you're brand new to Blender, uh, I'm, I'm not a Blender expert, but all you have to do is go here, add mesh grid this will pop up with this little uh, widget right here and just open it and you'll be able to input the parameters that I have right here the size it depends on what you want usually the textures that come out of Quixel are made for a two by two meter I found that four meters is fine it still does well as so you can still do two by two and when it comes to the subdivisions you can do however many subdivisions. I like 500 and 500. A good rule of thumb is when you see smoke coming out of your computer, that's when you should stop tessellating probably. But anyways, 500 is fine because this will give me a quad that's the size of a coin in real life, just for scale purposes. Um, you do need a good tessellated plane for this to work. Otherwise, the displacement map is not going to react the way that we want. So once we have this, I'm actually going back to shaded mode. We're going to add a modifier. So we have a ton of modifiers right here. The one that you're going to choose is this one called this place. So you click here, you're going to see that your plane kind of like bumps up. That's because it's trying to be this place right now. We don't have any texture, so it, it push it pushes up the whole plane. Uh, but we are going to select our texture. I already have a texture right here. Uh, from a previous test, but all you have to do is click on new. And as you can see, my plan went down because we no longer have a texture. And after that, you're going to click this little switches right here. And that will take you to this panel where you're going to select your texture. 
if your type is not on image or movie, I uh, just click this drop down menu and go and select it right here. That way we're going, we can select our own displacement map. So click on open. And right here, I'm in the folder where I downloaded uh, the Quixel, the assets from Quixel Bridge. And I'm just going to choose the displacement.exr. Click on open image. And there you go. You have your displacement right there. Now, this doesn't look too good. So we're going to do some adjustment to that. Actually, this it's really pointy and it's really noisy. It's not doing what the displacement map is supposed to be doing. All right, so after this, we can go back to our modifier and there's a couple of things we need to change. So you see that we have coordinates here. Right now it's set to local. We want to set those coordinates to UVs. There you go. Which by the way, um, something that I forgot, when you're creating your grid, uh, make sure you have generate UVs marked. If you don't, then this is also not gonna work. All right, so we're here in UVs and you can see that this is starting to take shape. It's no longer extremely noisy as it was, but I think it's uh, too pointy. That's kind of looks like what displacement looks when you use uh, too much and it's really stretched out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring it down to this level. Uh, this may be a little bit too flat. If you want, you can do 0.2. And that's a little bit better. So this is what's going to give you that nice displacement. So once we are done with that, we need to add another modifier and it's called smooth corrective. So we click on this one, as you're gonna see, it's going to smooth out before it was kind of like um, very jagged, edgy. And the reason why I added this smooth modifier is because I found that if I export this straight away into Unreal, some of the triangles may come with holes. So this is why I decided to add this. All right, so maybe we bump up the displacement strength a little bit more. So 0 0.25, that should be fine. That'll be like when we did displacement in Unreal then, and we typed 25 in the amount. It's almost the same. So we have these two modifiers and that's all we have to do pretty much. Then you go into export, you want to export as an FBX of course. And what I've been doing is I usually export it out to uh, where the asset's at. So I know which one it belongs to and I want to export it there. Uh, over here, there's a couple of things you have to take into account. So make sure that it's normal. So make sure that you apply the modifiers. Uh, usually bake animation is ticked. I don't need bake animation, so I'm gonna untick that. Everything else is fine. And I'm gonna click on export. Actually gonna rename this to Icelandic Rocks. Uh, you can actually remember to rename it to whatever you want. You can export it out. It's going to take a minute because it's kind of heavy. And then we go back here into Unreal. So I already downloaded this from Quixel within Unreal. The reason why I've done it this way is so I can get this nice material already assembled for me. So you're gonna go to Content, Quixel Bridge, make sure you have the plugin, by the way. It happened to me that I installed Unreal Engine 5 and then I downloaded the Valley of the Ancients right away and I didn't notice that the plugin was queued. So I was worried like, why, why didn't I get Quixel Bridge? So make sure you have that plugin installed because this time it's a plugin. Now, what we're gonna do is we're just going to browse and it's exactly the same name that's here on Quixel Bridge. Mine is the two by two M. So I just type this same name over here uh, on my surfaces and you just look for the same thumbnail and that's it. And if you need a little bit of guidance, you can always go to the folder where you download it from Quixel Bridge and you'll have a thumbnail preview here if you want to make sure that you got the right match. So you got this one right here. I always download the highest quality possible. And then you can click add and it's going to be in your project. Now, after that, you're going to see that I have my FBX right here. I'm going to bring it over into Unreal by dragging and dropping. Uh, there's a couple of things right here. Uh, you don't actually have to move anything. Everything by default is fine. I only uncheck generate light maps because we're in Unreal 5 and I'm not gonna, no longer gonna use that. So import all, leave it for a second. It's a high poly 
mesh so it's going to take a little bit and you're going to get this i remember i used to get this with all the quixel assets uh i don't know why but whatever it doesn't affect what we're doing but we have our mesh right here so you're going to bring your mesh within on the editor i'm actually going to zero it out there you go there we have it let's just lift it up a little bit and we're going to apply the material so we're going to throw in the material and there you go you got a nice displaced plane with a texture so we have actual displacement here okay this is not a flat plane and this is really cool because now remember the textures are always tileable so you could also do this and do this and now you have much larger plane and with more tiling i already have one here that probably showcase the uh, displacement a little bit better so this is the hawaii level one so i'm just going to throw in the material and there you go i just like this because of the color but this one is a little bit more displaced due to having more cracks and crevices and the displacement is a lot more evident here but i did use the same parameters that i did for uh, this one and even though it's the displacement is you know it's making it not flat you can always tile it however many times you want and you'll be able to now use the displacement plane in unreal engine but wait a second this is too heavy and i know i'm missing something i'm missing the nanite portion so i'm gonna go back and i'm actually going to delete all these assets uh let's go back to our sandy rock double click the asset and in nanite settings all you have to do is enable and apply changes it's going to take a little bit also and now we have a nanite mesh that we can put in here and we can duplicate and we can make a really long pathway or you can make a big uh, giant platform or whatever you want with these and it's going to help you out to have a tessellated surface so let's just throw in all of these let's throw in the material there you go and this is a completely nanite mesh because if we go here into nanite visualization triangles there you go you have all kinds of triangles they are vibrating and shaking around here because there are so many of them but hey it works so as you can see a couple of good things here is uh, one of the problems that i remember having with tessellated displacement in unreal engine 4 was that i had to resize the object bounds otherwise when you pull the camera away it will start flickering now because we have nanite this no longer happens now remember to subscribe ring that bell for notification i'm going to be showing in a future video how to how will i be using this to create environments and to showcase the reason why we still need to use displacement maps within unreal engine remember if you want to support the channel you can join the patreon if not, then leaving a like and leaving a comment really helps out with the engagement. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter and there's that Discord that we talk about. It's a really cool community. Make sure you join us and I'll see you in the next video.